Hello guys, S2W here as your average consumer with your casual consumer's review. For today's review, I was able to get the newest silhouette from the Ultra Boost family, possibly the most popular shoe in the Adidas lineup. Actually, leaked images of the new silhouette were shown late last year in 2016, along with the Adidas Ultra Boost lace list which already debuted about a month ago. To be honest, I was waiting for this silhouette for the longest time. Ever since I saw its first images, these were a lot better than the lace list model in my opinion and looks like it's finally time for the silhouette to get its first release in Canada. Today, I have the Adidas Ultra Boost All Terrain, short for ATR, in the burgundy colorway for a review. Now to make it clear, this silhouette have already dropped in Europe and the United States in two different colorways, about two weeks ago from this video's upload date. Canada never received those first colorways, the olive and the tans, so this is marking our first initial release of these Ultra Boost ATR. In a single day, Adidas released three colorways of the same silhouette, the grey, the blacks, and also the burgundy which I like the most. I really like the black as well, but since I have too many black shoes, I decided to pick these reds instead. This Ultra Boost ATR model has been on the radar of many Boost fans. Reason being is that it's a mid silhouette, a look that Adidas does not offer in the Ultra Boost lineup unless you buy the Ultra Boost mid consortium models. This Ultra Boost ATR is the only alternative to achieve the very similar mid ankle look, but with a decked out outsole and a higher tech knit upper for weatherproofing. What am I talking about you may ask? Well let's take a closer look at these sneakers. My pupils dilated when I first saw them in pictures, and thankfully, it doesn't disappoint in hand at all. As we can see, the shoe here dons an overall burgundy tone mixed with black knitting and little bright orange speckles peppered throughout the whole upper. Just like the UB laceless, Adidas claims that these sneakers are created with a one-of-a-kind knitting process so that the upper on every pair of shoes are unique on its own and nobody will have the same one just like yours. The lateral and medial side looks identical to each other, where the only difference that I do immediately notice between my left and right pair are the placement of the orange speckles. It seems like they are popping out at different spots of the shoe, offering a very distinctive representation of the sneaker. But let's be real, unless you examine the shoes up close, no one will probably ever notice. Following its Ultra Boost lineage, the upper is made out of prime knit, a very stretchy, thin, and breathable material that imitates the feeling of an ultra light sock fitting comfort. The knit is very flexible and adaptable for foot support, and honestly, feels very much alike to the Ultra Boost 3.0 prime knit uppers. Heck, if you look closely, you can see the shadow of the 3.0 upper design, the similar broken stripes patterning near the front midfoot area of the shoes. Speaking of the midfoot area, there is no outer cage here to be seen, but to place their 3 stripe branding on this shoe, they've decided to deboss their logo outwards so that the 3 stripes are easily seen. This logo is knit as well, so it makes it seem like a unified transition. To put the idea of an all-terrain model into completion, they have added an ultra-thin film on this upper that apparently helps repel water, so it's somewhat safe when you want to bring these out when the weather doesn't cooperate. I don't want to ruin these sneakers with a water test, but let's just say I don't particularly trust it. I sprayed some water repellents on my prime knit shoes before, and they don't completely resist it due to the microscopic gaps in between the knit fabric, so water should still go through, just not as much I guess. As we move up towards the sneaker, we will see an ankle collar rising up that will wrap around our ankles. This ankle collar is very flexible as well and can very well widen large enough to fit any ankle sizes. This ankle collar definitely does not feel as constricting as the consortium models, so if you dislike that tightened feeling, your ankles will feel more comfortable with this silhouette. All in all, this high collar will provide more coverage on your ankles, like a nice warm sweater prepared for usage in colder months. At the back of the shoes, we have a bright orange pull tab that will help you put on the shoes more easily. I would highly suggest you to use this as the collar does lean on the thinner side, so if you stretch it too hard, you might be risking and tearing the knit apart. So use this pull tab whenever you can, or if you want to be safe, not use anything at all but hold the shoes from the bottom instead and slide your feet in. Also at the middle of the pull tab are long oval shapes and surprisingly when you take a flash picture, it's actually 3M reflective. Of course, we can never forget the iconic molded heel counter providing the natural fit that allows optimal movement of our Achilles. They have seemed to use this particular heel counter instead of the matte finished one instead. In my opinion, it's a good thing because these newer ones feel much more durable and seem scratch free, whereas the older ones feel wobbly and a scuff magnet. At the top of the shoes, we will see that these ATR came with rope laces in the color of burgundy to match the knit upper. The laces are threaded through a piece of plastic, attached to the sides of the knit so the whole shoe will tighten up as soon as you lace it up. The strangest design in my opinion is the tongue of this shoe if you ask me. I'm not sure if the tongue is resting too high or what, but I think I'll need some time to adjust to the way that this was designed. It's not terrible, but a little awkward for some reason. But before I move on, the tongue is padded a little at the back, and you will see the Adidas Sport Performance logo on this tongue. Inside the shoe, the inner lining is padded really well actually. 
By touch, it feels very plush and comfy and to be honest, I feel like it's more cushioned than all previous Ultra Boost models that I have, which is great as an ankle and Achilles rest. At the midfoot area, there is an inner cage here to make the knit upper more structurally strong and intact. This also increases the support of the sneaker, making it feel more durable for active exercises. Also, they do come with removable insoles just like any Ultra Boost. This one came in orange, and if you flip it over, you will see the same squarish pod designs on the underside that probably no one will ever notice unless you take them out. As for the midsole, not much to say about it. It's the Ultra Boost midsole with excellent comfort and Adidas' most responsive cushioning ever. When people say they're walking on clouds, it's this cushioning, specifically this proportion from the Ultra Boost midsole. Under the shoe, unlike previous Ultra Boost and to finish off the all-terrain motif, there is a new flexible grid-like continental rubber outsole for an energized ride. This rubber seems very thick and reminds me of truck tires to be honest, making it feel like it has exceptional grip on the floor, especially in wet conditions. Of course, we will see the iconic torsion system at the midfoot area for midfoot stability, and a unique plus and minus design carved into the rubber of a few selected rubber grid. Anyways, here are some Adidas Ultra Boost all-terrain in the burgundy colorway fit footage. Fit-wise, it's definitely a very new experience on an Ultra Boost for me. I would say go with your Ultra Boost 3.0 sizing, which as a wide footer myself, I do true to size. The knit upper feels pretty much as stretchable as 3.0 knitting up near the toe box. However, the size of the shoe and at the back of the shoe does feel a little tighter than normal. The inner cage and also the richer padding at the back definitely had an impact on the free spaces inside the shoe. Is it a huge changing effect? I don't particularly think so, but if you can't find your true to size and can only go for a half size up, it wouldn't be that bad of an idea as well. Comfort wise, they are definitely comfortable, but as a general walking shoe, which a lot of people have been turning these running shoes into nowadays, I would say it's not the most comfortable in the Ultra Boost line. The Ultra Boost 3.0 is still the most comfortable to me as a general lifestyle walking shoe. The thick rubber also here makes the boost cushioning a tad less bouncy in my opinion. You can still feel the boost material, but I think the thick rubber has absorbed and muted some of the regular boost responsive properties that we normally feel. Just by standing with these on, you will feel less squishy on the ground, but the positive side is, is that you'll feel a little taller. But jokes aside, these were created as a weather resistant design in mind. The rubber also is thicker and sharper for a reason. The overall experience of wearing these isn't horrible at all. It will not be the best, but it will still feel comfy overall. Again, the shoe looks fantastic in my opinion. The colorway looks great on feet, and also this silhouette is visually appealing. At least way more than the laceless version to me. Price wise though, these were $270 before tax in Canada, $30 more than a regular Ultra Boost, and $20 more than the laceless Ultra Boost. Because I live in Toronto, after tax, these became just over $300. It's definitely on the more expensive side. I mean, they did add a water repellent substance to this upper so we don't have to do it ourselves. And the also is probably a lot more durable and it will wear out less quickly than a normal Ultra Boost. For the long run, these might be a better pickup as it works ideally for various weather conditions. But for comfort on a general level, the cheaper Ultra Boost 3.0 model would work just as well for a daily user. I personally like this mid silhouette a lot more though, as it's unique and stylish to me. As always, throw me some likes if you like this video, and let me know in the comments if you cop the pair as well, or if you stayed away because of something like the higher pricing of the sneaker. That's it for today, S2W signing off.